Friends, comrades, fellow admirals, I am Admiral Andre and I greet you. It is of course the year 2017 and uh, it's already halfway through January so I do apologize for taking so long to get back to uh, my channel but I've had a wonderful break and I truly hope that you have had the same. But nevertheless now it is time to continue our campaign here in uh, the southwest of the US and of course that was our little viewpoint of the Grand Canyon which is of course one of the requirements for getting the license here in uh, Phoenix which we achieved last time so let me actually just start by quickly reviewing the situation and uh, I think that will be very useful for myself because it's been quite a few weeks since I last played the previous episode so let's just have a quick look here of course we have to obtain the landing permissions and uh, there's a total of five different airports and we have the one in San Diego and of course the one in Phoenix and San Diego relies on the fuel and uh, oil delivery routes here so that's at least something that we achieved last time. Then of course there is the uh, steel to Los Angeles which of course gets converted into machines and uh, I'm very interested to see actually how far we are with that one. Let's see. Okay, we haven't delivered any of the machines yet. I think last time I set up this route here for the coal and iron, so it might still be a bit new. Let me just see. Is there a, a route here uh, going for the delivery? Let's just have a look at everything quickly. LA City Bus, of course, the San Diego, so we have the coal and iron, and then LA Machine, so that one delivers the actual machines, but where is the one taking the steel? Okay, so there is that one, and it is making a small profit, so it's at least operating, so that should take care of itself. We just, of course, have to monitor it and see how it goes. Then there's the food delivery here uh, that goes to Santa Barbara, but that's of course not one of the uh, requirements for getting the Santa Barbara license. For that one, uh, we just have to keep with the poker game here, and I believe that actually costs us five million dollars, so let's not do that now, we can't anyway. The other thing was, of course, Las Vegas, and I think that's a good place to start in this episode. Just because we have to finish the Hoover Dam here, we actually still have to start it, but anyway. And to do that, we have one of, uh, well, we have two choices, and we can, of course, use both if we like, but uh, I'll probably just use one. And the first choice is to take the stone from the quarry here in the Grand Canyon uh, to this plant, the construction materials plant, which will then deliver the uh, construction materials to the dam site there. So that's one option, but it might be a bit of a challenge to actually get the stone to the uh, construction materials plant because of the terrain here. It's certainly not an impossible challenge, but it is something that will take a bit of uh, work. Let's just actually see if it's possible to do it across the uh, water here. It does look like it can, so maybe that would actually be a better choice. I never thought of that until now, actually. Uh, of course, the other option is the uh, bit more uh, involved one. Since we already have to produce steel for Los Angeles to turn it into the machines, we are producing slag as a byproduct. Let's just see if we actually have some. We do actually, yes. And then to get that to the construction materials plant uh, is of course the option and then to just continue on towards the dam. To me that is quite an appealing option, that is the one I have tried before on my own. Just because it has the sense of, you know, using the industrial byproduct of a um, process that we are actually using already and not letting it go to waste, rather than setting up a whole new chain. And the other reason for me is just because I think, you know, the Grand Canyon is a, is a national, you know, I don't know if it's actually a national park or a monument or whatever it's called, but it is some place that we would like to preserve. And therefore to have this quarry running here and shipping stone is not necessarily the most ideal. Let's just have a look to investigate the option here. If uh, we do put a dock here, it should be doable but no no I, I think let's go with the slag it's a bit more expensive to set up but I like that more 
So to do that of course we will have to decide now do we want a train line delivering the slag or do we want trucks and trucks are actually a, a workable solution here again that's uh, some experience that I have already all that we do is connect this existing road now to that one and then set up the line so it has minimal outlays to actually get it started but then we do have the tracks here as well so we might as well make use of that let me just have a look here quickly would it be worth it to actually double the tracks just see is it going to be possible we might have a problem down here but let's actually try that we'll deliver the slag by train I'm not sure if it will be uh, exactly profitable but then again we'll never know until we try it so uh, I don't want the catenary there we go so let's just get started and see where it takes us uh, is it possible to make this connection here Too much curvature nope so we're just gonna have to delete that little piece there again just pushing it back a bit collision okay there is a problem here let's just have a look something survived there this is so interesting for me to now get back to uh, transport fever because I made a point of it not to play it at all during the break and uh, I think that was actually a good idea just to you know try something different and uh, actually the thing that I've been busy with on my own has been Fallout 4 I've never played it until now in the Christmas you know the holiday sales so I got the whole thing there and all of the expansions the season pass and all of that and I've just been playing that and it's been a great deal of fun but I have missed transport fever I must say it it does bring something to the table that no other game has at least in my experience just this uh, sense of the, you know the railroad and the different modes of transport so it's even better than uh, railroad tycoon in my experience just because of all the different modes of transport that we didn't have access to in uh, railroad tycoon so yes, this is going to be a bit of a costly experiment, but let's just see where it goes. Something like that. And so yes, I've been threatening to get back to the channel and uh, today I saw a message actually on my ch uh, comments and uh, somebody was asking when are you getting back to it so I thought no that's that's time now it's uh, I've been delaying far too long and of course the longer I delay the more difficult it will be to get back into it so uh, that's why I just thought to jump right into this campaign because that is something that I still need to actually progress more quickly on because I still want to get to the European missions as well and uh, I'm actually looking forward to those so this is where the problem comes in. This bridge is actually not going to be a cheap uh, thing to build. Let me see if we just divert the tracks and then try to cross here. It'll have to... Uh, let's just have a look here. Have to wait because the money is not so good right now. If we just do a straight... Uh, bridge like that we can save a lot of money but it's still not quite there yet and there we've lost a lot of money uh, further but at least most of it is finished so I feel good about that then the delivery will just be by truck so I think we can actually set that up already just the uh, drop-off point it doesn't have to be a big truck stop because there's nothing going to be picked up there and even this one doesn't have to be a big one because we're literally just picking up the one thing and money depleted mind. it's no use begging and pleading our financiers are refusing to put even one more penny into our project that's okay we can handle it uh, there's already another 600,000 so that was quite unnecessary to see where the best position will be for this something like that it's eating into the terrain a lot here but rather than changing the coastline there 
So that'll do for that one. Let's see if we can actually finish the bridge right now. Yes, pretty much. And the speed here is not super important, so I think we can just go with the concrete bridge rather than the steel one. Was the steel one? No, the steel one is more expensive, so let's take the cheaper option there. And somewhere here, it just has to be in range, of course, of the, uh, the drop-off point there. So let's just see if we have one of those dead-end stations. Uh, a single track, standard, no catenary, I think, at this point. Let's just see if I put it like this. Is it going to still affect the... Uh, it looks like it should still be in range. So we can actually just put it like that once we, of course, have the money. And this is really where the uh, effort that we put in at the start to get these passenger lines up, this is where this is going to start paying off now. Because if we didn't do that, we would be in some serious financial difficulties because the uh, various, you know, the industrial goods, the steel, the machinery and so on, it's not enough to sustain us financially. Certainly this one is, I think, uh, the passengers uh, going to the Grand Canyon because that is quite a popular destination. Actually, if we see here, there's too many people waiting here. 44, we need some more buses. As we see different problems, we really have to attend to them. So let's just buy three more, I think. And this will be the Canyon Tours. Just because people don't, you know, they mustn't wait here. There's uh, really no reason for people to wait because the next train is already on its way and that just means the problem will compound over time. And all they really want to do is get here and back. So we need more frequent bus services for that. So there we go, almost $2 million again. I must say I'm very pleased with that. Luckily, that was something that uh, we took care of at the beginning. Otherwise, right now, we'd be in a bit of a tough spot. But anyway, let's just see. I keep wanting to right-click for some reason. And just make this connection. Now, the wrong street. Is it connected? It is. So that's fine. Good. Then just the tracks for the final connection and that is done very expensive i must say it's probably more cost effective to just use the uh, ships from the grand canyon but uh, that's of course your choice when you're playing this it's definitely a viable option so let's just see here we definitely need a signal right here for the new trains that we will need coming out of the depot then the other one will just use this one track, so this will not be a double one. So I would just want them waiting here. Actually, yes, that, that should be the place where the trains wait, not on this little piece of track, because otherwise they'll stop here. The train will go past into the station, then this light will be green for them to proceed. But then the other train can't come back because this little bit of shared track is then going to be blocked. So always put the uh, signal outside of any kind of uh, switches and things like this, just for safety. Then let's see what else. We will definitely, I think, need another signal here, just in case there's something else in the uh, station there. This will just be one train, of course, doing the slag run. Maybe we can actually get that. No, probably not. Nope, we can of course get the cheap train here. It's not cheap at all, but the cheapest one. But uh, we do want some speed on that, so I think we'll wait a little bit. Let's just have a look here. This is becoming quite a problem. There's almost 200 people waiting in LA for this train, which can of course only accommodate 95. So it is fine on the San Diego side, as you can see. There's not really so much of a pile up there but the LA side is uh, it's again money being wasted because those people would be willing to travel and pay us to uh, move them so actually what we can do since we have two million let's just pause things and investigate this a little bit it might be worth it to actually double this track I know it's such a short you know route but still when it comes down to a weight like this, there's really nothing else that we can do. We have to basically 
double the track here. Let's see what the costs will be. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's just make sure the catenaries are off because this will not be an electric train, I think. And that's not too expensive. Just something like this and then of course it joins right before the station. And then of course the signals, very important. Let's just have a look here. So as soon as the uh, train comes out it goes onto the right hand side so the ones coming into the station will just have to wait. Let's just put it far enough back so they don't overlap. And then various uh, signals along the way especially if we have three trains running. I'm not sure if that will happen but just so we future proof it. Let's put a couple of signals along the track here. There we go and then of course the same thing here just getting the track into the station and then having the trains leave on the right hand side but now of course there's already a connection here which complicates things a little bit. So this little piece of track here is going to be shared so they'll actually have to wait back here. Well it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay this this might be an issue now because these signals are too close so the trains might actually overlap them. So let's just move it. Uh, actually it should be fine. That, that should be uh, enough of a space for them. Then the next thing is just to wait. This one is coming to LA now so let's wait until it leaves and uh, goes back to San Diego then we can get another one if we can afford it of course. Let me just have a look again. What is the situation with the uh, time? I've forgotten about that. should see it in the medals. 1943. It's 31 now, so we don't have too much time. So I just have to keep that in mind. Very lovely train there. And... Because it has so many people it does take a little while to load and unload. There we go. 1.46 that's not quite enough. What kind of engine is this? Just more or less have to buy the same one. Just have a look. It's this one, the Atlantic, which is of course outside of our uh, budget right now. Just because if they have different speeds, then we're going to eventually have a problem because the one train will be catching up with the other one the whole time and it will be held up by the signals. But I know that's not too much of a problem because the route is so short. So actually it might just be worth getting the mogul for this. Just see, of course, we have to get passenger cars as well, and that's way too expensive. Our affordability status is not quite accommodating to that. So the machines are actually being delivered. That's fine. Let's just see, is there a pile-up anywhere? Not really. Okay, just delivered the coal and uh, iron there. So one thing that we might actually get into right now, oh there we go, some money has just come in. I was just thinking because we do have the two airports now and I believe that was a goal for this video uh, from last time, is to actually get the whole air route thing running. Because they do want us to set up at least four lines and then of course we have to ship our own uh, advertising brochures and get paid for that so it's a bit of a scam. But uh, hey, it's money so let's let's just get started on that. So we'll say a new line here and this goes from San Diego to Phoenix. There we go. So this is just a very simple San Diego to Phoenix. Now for this one, because it's still asking us to deliver airmail, this won't be a passenger route at all. So we'll have specialist airplanes doing this uh, line for us. Let's just have a look here. So we've got either the uh, Junkers F-13 or the Dornier Mercure which is of course the older versions but I think it's okay because we don't really 
want the uh, passenger capacity because you can see here the capacity is just one of course when you look at this in a sandbox game that's not the case but this is because they don't want you moving passengers with these craft not yet so uh, let's just get the Dornier Mercur it's a, at least a quite a cheap plane so I think that will be just fine for us and then we'll set that on this new line and we'll finally get into the air mail business which is something that we've been aiming for for a long time and this can actually be very profitable. What is happening with your tail there? That is uh, unfortunate, but okay, let's pretend like that never happened. Let's just see how much of this I can buy already. Let's just keep it with the same engine and uh, which passenger cars did I use on this one? Okay, so it's those heavier ones. Let's just have a look. I think these ones, yeah, that's way too expensive. Let's just go for the cheaper ones. It will slow the train down, but I think at this point it's just more important to get the people moving. Uh, even if it's slower, at least they're moving and not standing still and not paying us. So we should have enough for two more. Just one. Oh well. And another one. Another one maybe? Just so we maximize it. You know, we don't want to... It's almost like having an opportunity cost by not doing this. We're actually losing out. We should... Oh well, there we go, the money's gone off again. So this should be okay for now. We can always uh, add some more of, uh, cars to this train. So let's just set it onto the line there and uh, start making some more money. Still a very nice train and uh, we can change the color as well. Let's just make this one green. I don't know why, just for the sake of it I guess. And 64 people should be okay. Uh, actually, where can I see this now again? 101. That's not even enough. That's interesting. Oh well, we'll see. Over time it should help because now we have two, so we'll have a much more regular service. And uh, if it doesn't help, we'll just add more cars to that train. That also should mean that our bus service in LA is making quite a bit of money. Let's just have a look if this is true. LA City bus, yes, almost 200,000, because of course the people want to get to the train station and back, so uh, that's a good avenue. And yes, we're earning a lot of money with this email route already. You can see we're getting 500,000 at a time for one trip, so these must be some really valuable advertising brochures. But anyway, sooner or later our scam will be discovered, but let's profit from it as long as we can. So that should also help us a lot just to get the slag line running. And I don't think that one has to have too much capacity, although we do want 100 construction materials. Just see how much is piled up right now. Only 15. Because they're not really producing because there's no potential. Try to ship more steel. Well, there's nothing waiting here at the moment. Let's just see, how much are you producing? 90. And there is quite a pile up here. Where is that train? So it's already on the way back, but it's full. Interesting. So we actually do have the potential to have another train on this line. But then things will get complicated with that double, double line here. It's possible though. Just see, then of course there's the whole thing with the fuel that we still can make a lot of profit from. I think we only have actually one vehicle delivering the fuel here in San Diego. Let's just see. Yes, just the one. And it's making a little bit of profit, but uh, 
we can always increase that. Let's have a look. You see, San Diego's uh, fuel demand is only being met at 8%. So let's actually add a few more vehicles to that. The one is not enough. Just take the Mac AC and say uh, fuel and put four more onto this line, I think. There we go. So it does cover a, quite a decent area of the industry, I think. Let's just have a look. Yes. There again is why it was so valuable just to position these things strategically in the beginning. So now we can just add more and more capacity. And of course, once that is being met, you know, in a more uh, respectable fashion, more than 8% anyway, we can start shipping the fuel to Los Angeles. But let's first maximize the market that we have immediate access to. Then we have $3 million. So actually, let's get this thing running just so we start shipping the slag. Our time is running out here. I think, let's just see. Why not just take another Atlantic and then which one is it? Yes, the gondola. Slag, so how many of these can we afford? Not too many actually. Although they can carry 12 at a time, which might actually be more than we need right now. So let's just get a new line up here. And that goes from here, of course, all the way to uh, Las Vegas. And this will just be Las Vegas slag. I think that's very simple because this only has a very uh, specific need, you know, to build the dam. Afterwards, we can, of course, expand it by uh, shipping the construction materials to Las Vegas, but uh, or even further afield. But right now, I think that's a bit outside of our reach. Now, let's just see. Why are you not moving this? I think it just has to still activate and of course we have to get this line running but it should have some innate demand for the uh, slag new line from there to there and this will just be Here we go, Las Vegas construction materials, short and sweet, and then we can just put the vehicle depot up right here. I keep wanting to right click to bring up the construction menu, I think it's because I was playing Tropico 5 as well over the holiday. There we go, yes that's true, Tropico 5 you do right click to bring up the construction menu. And just, uh, just one for now, I think. Because there's nothing happening here. Just to activate the demand, otherwise we'll be running a loss there. Let's see, money earned. We've already got um, 1.4 million. Was that 14 million? No, it's 1.5 from the uh, email route. So it's actually paying great dividends here. course a fantastic view for the future but I think it might be a close call here let's just pretend there's no hill here uh, yep there we go oh well in the one side and out the other but that's okay you know these uh, these things happen we just pretend they don't of course let's see how are things here 60 people waiting, the trains are running, there's no clash or anything with the signals and it does look like it's been catching up. That's it, that pretty much takes all the people out of LA. Good, so at least that market is now fully tapped into and uh, let's just see where is the... okay the slag is starting to pile up here so we can actually just send this train back Okay, it's here anyway, so we might as well let it complete the journey. Excellent. And actually, with the rest of the money that we make from that uh, airmail scam, we can actually buy our way into the poker game. I think that'll be worth it because uh, we need to sort of just get rid of that money anyway. Not really, of course, but certainly if you get money and it's through a scam, you do want to make sure you're not caught with it. 
there we go so it's on its way back it's got a decent speed and what capacity 24 let's just see how much is waiting already 20 okay more than that so we actually need to send it back to the depot here just to get another gondola actually let's make it another two don't have to overkill that one the machines are going well they'll definitely be done very soon and what else let's just see line set up okay we can of course set up another line on the same route but that's just a bit cheaty for me we should really get some more airports before we set up new lines then okay deliver construction material that thing we're working on the poker game we're working on and of course the landing permission so that's of course the other thing if you don't if you find that you don't actually get access to all the different airports you can just put four routes onto the two airports but uh, yes that's not maybe the most ideal but since it's already a scam I think it won't add too much to it and yes what's happening here why is this food not being shipped oh no this is actually to the uh, food processing plant okay we need to get some more vehicles onto that something I've been neglecting a bit there and let's see uh, make it two for livestock and this will be Santa Barbara is this now the food no grain and livestock there we go and then we just have another two for the grain as well if I can find it there we go that's it so that one is just being maximized again and uh, actually we can get something more ah the Zephyr onto the delivery as well so let's just do that as well before I forget get distracted by all the shiny new things let's see food let's make that three because it's a longer route there and how much of the food is actually being delivered here 57 percent okay so there's still more capacity and then we can start shipping it to LA still a lot of red things coming off there which one is that now income expenditure yes I don't want to see that I feel it in my pocket anyway oh and I missed the train now or did I it's probably on the way no it is this one okay that's fine when it gets back I can just add some now what's the next thing let's have a look so the machines will be done very soon and then we'll have access to the LA airport and I think the best route to set up there will be between LA and Phoenix again LA to San Diego is possible and it might still be worth it because we're talking about airmail here so it won't affect our passenger transport business on the rails which is of course something we want to protect as much as possible because it's bringing us a lot of profit we can actually have a look quickly how much money are we making from this almost a million so it's really worth protecting that of course even if we do have air passenger routes right now it's not going to eat too much into that because the airplanes are still pretty much limited in their carrying capacity but I would still like to just focus on the rail transport here for now that should be done very soon and then let's see what else oh the money is rolling in from our scam isn't that wonderful well we did do some bootlegging as well previously so why not just keep that up and actually the fuel here is uh, quite an efficient business even though the boats here or the ships are very slow in their delivery you can see we're really piling up in terms of fuel so it might be worth thinking about shipping it to LA as well 40% is not really that high yet but we can start expanding now let's just have a look where is the uh, fuel demanded again of course that should be in the industrial areas so this is like the main industrial area let's just have a look and it's pretty well covered there so let's just get that up and running hey and we have the LA airport to our uh, at our access there so let's just see what we can do but first I just want to finish this quickly and it should be to there and this will be LA fuel 
Awesome, so that's up now and I just can put a few vehicles on here. I think it'll make a decent profit and of course profit is something that we really want uh, to keep going because once the scam comes to an end, we will lose that uh, amazing income that we're getting there. So let's just see fuel and uh, let's put five on this line just for now. Well, actually, no, five should be fine. Otherwise, it's going to eat everything up and leave nothing for San Diego. There we go. So that should get that one running. And then we can also get a new airline up between LA and San Diego. And I think again the Dornier Mercur will be fine. We don't need uh, anything else and there's nothing else available of course. So we'll just put that one on it and uh, there we go. We've got two lines running now. Let's just see, obtain landing permission. We can of course now put another line up between LA and Phoenix. So it's a triangle basically. That's not really cheating because it's not having more than one line on the same route. But uh, I think if we do have airmail that wants to get to Phoenix... Our airmail cartel has been busted and the politicians are now looking for a scapegoat. Of course. We need to ensure that we emerge from this affair reasonably unscathed. If we don't slip the right people a few bills immediately, we can forget the landing permission for Los Angeles and any future licenses. So we've been caught out. Oh well. Paid to get the takeoff and landing permissions back and thus the email for routes that start to end in LA. So we can forego this if we want because uh, it's only affecting Los Angeles but of course that is our main hub in this region so we'll just have to pay the two million dollars. We can more than afford it so let's just do that. Pay it, you know, put it in the right person's pocket and the problem goes away like it usually does in politics. Of course, it doesn't really go away, but uh, anyway, what's happening here? So the people are not standing in the hot sun anymore, waiting to see the Grand Canyon. It's uh, moving efficiently here. And uh, once the actual airlines get up and running that transport passengers to Phoenix, we should see more traffic on the uh, Grand Canyon tours line as well. Let's just see, 77. What's the capacity of the train again? Ah, it's now just... Oh, there it is. 112. That's fine. It can just keep running for now. And we're still making the money. So this uh, paying off of the officials in LA hasn't actually shut down our illicit email scam, but uh, it just made, made the problem go away. So I'm not complaining. So what's next? Let's just see here. Is the construction material being moved? Yes, it is. But of course, not a lot. Only 8 out of 100. But still, that's fine. It's just getting it started. And speaking of that, I really need to focus on this train. It's probably already in the... Yep. Uh, sending it back now, it's just going to waste that resource. I really do need to not forget about that. Just see here. So now the uh, coal and iron and steel, they're just basically making us extra profit because we don't need them for the uh, mission anymore. But let's just have a look here. Machines. So there's nothing really piling up here. And we have the Douglas DC-3 and a whole lot of other things. That's very nice. Of course, we want some other options. Let's just see here, if this could be actually increased, we can start shipping uh, some of these machines back to San Diego and thus complete the fuel uh, route basically or complement it with something else. But I don't think we really have enough capacity right now. Okay, and this is why. No, 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 no. It's been piling up there. So we need some more vehicles desperately. Definitely something to stay on top of. Let's just see. Steel and I'm just going to get a couple. LA, where is that? Steel. Go. This is just again money wasted. And once the machines get really, you know, kicked up into the next gear, we can start shipping them out. 
And here's the thing I was talking about, I think, in the first episode, the traffic. Of course, in LA it's notorious, but you can see here, this is really a holdup for people. And I've seen it, that it gets so bad that there's a continuous traffic jam all the way from LA to San Diego. And it can happen, so, uh, at least in the game. So that's why I thought, really, if we want to start somewhere with passengers, between these two cities is an absolute must, as soon as possible. Just see, the food is still looking a bit bad there. We can really work on that. And of course, the iron and coal, we can really move that up. What's the year now? 35, so we only have a few years left. Oil as well, we can increase that with another ship, perhaps. Maybe we should actually do that. There's no reason not to. No, this should be crude oil. I've made this mistake before when I started playing where I put the ships on oil instead of crude oil, but that's of course a different oil, so let's just get two of them and you must go to oil one and you must go to oil two, please. Thank you. And I think that will do it for this episode. We still have a lot of work to do, so I, I don't want to cram it all into one episode. And this has just been a bit of a warm-up for me to get back into the recording and all of that. So I must say it's really fun to be back again. And uh, I'm very lucky in the sense that we set up this mission very well to get started with. Otherwise, I would have struggled a lot right now because, you know, it's just getting back into it is always not the easiest thing. But everything was basically running smoothly already. So now it's just building up on that until we uh, meet the goal. So really Las Vegas is the only holdout now. We can actually, before I end the episode, let's just buy our place at the poker table. Oh, better luck next time. As he won our entire state, our poker partner has kindly allowed us to use his runway. How generous. So we do get something from our loss. So there we go. That one is taken care of as well. So Las Vegas is the last holdout. And of course, a few things we can optimize. So that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed and uh, things can only get better in the future. I'm feeling a bit rusty right now, but it will get better. So at least we get started again. Thank you very much for watching and for leaving comments. Please do so again if you feel like it. And I hope your 2017 has been off to a fantastic start and may it bring you all good things and good fortune. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.